If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. The topic of today is pit and fissure sealant. So sealant as we know means to create a barrier. It is kind of creating a seal. So the thing which is outside cannot go inside and thing which is inside obviously cannot go outside. So it is kind of creating a barrier. So pit and fissure sealant means that we are sealing the pits and fissures. So we are sealing the anatomical say characteristics of a teeth. Now what are pit and fissures? First of all we need to see that. So fissures are deep cleft between the adjoining cusp and pits are small pinpoint depression located at the junction of the developmental groove or at the terminals of these groove. So we have fissures in the cusp and they meet at a point and that point is called the pit. Okay and we have a pit at the center and that is the central pit. So now we are talking about the molars particularly. So we have a central pit there. So this is a cross section of the cusp of a teeth. So here this is the area where our pits and fissures are present let's say. So these area will provide a retentive factor for plaque. Alright. Now when the carbohydrate it comes in contact with this plaque the acidogenic bacteria in the plaque will create acid using this carbohydrate. Now this acid it will damage the enamel wall of the pit and fissure. As we can see here the enamel here is thinner compared to the enamel in other parts of the tooth. So here the dentine involvement will be much earlier compared to any other portion. Also since it is a retentive area it will be the most susceptible site for formation of caries. So the caries here will form a triangular shape or say cone shaped lesion and the apex will be at the outer surface and the base towards the dentino enamel junction. Now how can we prevent the caries? If we seal this area with a suitable material then obviously we can prevent the caries from occurring. Now how do we do that? We do that with the help of pit and fissure sealant. Now before we proceed to the pit and fissure sealant let us see the type of fissures. There are various types of fissure. There are four types of fissure. We have V type, U type, I type and K type. So as is obvious from the diagram the V and the U shape fissure these are wide enough. So they are kind of self cleansing and hence they are caries resistant to an extent. Then we have the I shaped fissure. These are very constricted as you can see and it resembles a neck of a bottle. Therefore they are very much caries susceptible. The K shaped fissures are also very susceptible to caries. So a person can have any of these type of fissures or a combination of these and depending on that the caries susceptibility of an individual varies. All right. Now let us jump on to the classification of pit and fissure sealant. So we will be studying about five classification the first one is the polymerization method. So obviously according to the polymerization it could be self activation means you mix two components and the reaction happens and it sets and then we have light activation light activation. So in light activation you show a particular wavelength of light and it is cured or the reaction happens. We have four generations. We have the first generation and in that UV light was used. Then we have the second generation. In this it was self cure and then we have the third generation. Here we used visible light, visible light and then fourth generation this was fluoride releasing. So the first generation it was based on UV light having a wavelength of 356 and the example is newer light. But the problem with UV was that 
for example if this is our teeth and we are applying let's say a sealant here and then we show the uv light it will cure up to a distance but the deeper portions of the product will not get polymerized or say will be incompletely polymerized then a visible light was also used and they were having a wavelength of 430 to 490 an example is helio seal then fluoride releasing the example is seal right seal right so this was according to the polymerization method or say according to the generations then we have filler content based on the filler content we have two types of sealant we have unfilled and we have filled so unfilled means there are no fillers obviously when there are no fillers it will have better flow and if it has better flow obviously it will flow more easily into the pit and fissure and therefore it will be more retentive so therefore retention will be good then in the filled one since it has filler its strength will be better so it has better strength therefore it will be resistant to wear all right then we have based on color so we have clear colored and we have something in between that is tinted so clear obviously it will give better aesthetic but the problem is when you recall the patient and when you check it you cannot identify it properly an example is helio seal so it changes from green to white color then we have the colored it is very easy to place and identify in recall appointment but it is not aesthetic so if you have some advantage you also have some disadvantage then comes the tinted so it is kind of opaque and you can still identify but it is not very obvious as the colored one then according to the chemical structure of monomer the pit and fissure can be classified as MMA which is methyl methacrylate then TEG DM and that is triethylene glycol dimethacrylate and then we have BPD which is bisphenol dimethacrylate and then we have the bis GMA and so on okay so this was another classification so I think we have pretty much done with the classification of pit and fissure sealant. Now let's move on to the clinical application of this product.